Hey, Allison. Hi, nice Good to, to see, see you. you. Let's go check out some labels. Sounds good. We're grocery shopping for some treats with dietitian Allison Martinez, looking at labels to see what's being added to our food. Let's check out the frozen aisle. From frozen foods to snacks. Get those nice bright Doritos. To candy. Throw them in there. And more. Okay. We're checking out some colorful ingredients. Allura Red. So that's a common red synthetic food dye. Uh, sunset Yellow. Sunset Yellow. Tartrazine is another um, artificial food dye that creates a yellow color in foods. So how often are Allura Red and Tartrazine and Sunset Yellow found in foods? I would say they're the artificial food dyes you're gonna see most frequently. These synthetic dyes make our food look good, but are they good for us? That's what Thomas Galligan is asking. These food dyes are marketing tools for the food industry. Thomas is a scientist who studies food additives for the U.S. Food and Health Watchdog Center for Science in the Public Interest. They are used to make food look more visually appealing so that you and I as consumers want to buy them. But they really offer no benefit to the consumer. But we like food to look good. So what is the concern about having these artificial dyes in our food? These synthetic food dyes can cause or exacerbate neurobehavioral problems in some kids. Things like inattention, hyperactivity, sleeplessness, restlessness, irritability, these sorts of things. That's why some other countries have changed how these products are sold. Since 2010, in the EU, there's been a requirement that foods that contain certain synthetic food dyes, like the three that we're discussing, actually have to have a warning label to warn consumers about the effects that they have on children's behavior. Thomas would like to see warning labels here, too. Not everybody is going to be impacted by synthetic food dyes. Canadian consumers should be offered the opportunity to protect their kids, just like European consumers. We want to see what those warning labels look like. Time to order some popular products from overseas. Stick that candy in the cart. We've got M&Ms, Skittles, Doritos, Nerds, Nerds Gummy Clusters, and Kool-Aid. The Canadian versions of the same products have one or more of the synthetic dyes, Allura Red, Tartrazine, or Sunset Yellow FCF, also known as Red Dye Number 40, Yellow 5, and Yellow 6. Okay, that should do it. We'll see what's in those products when they get here. While we wait for our international snack shipment to be delivered, we're heading to Niagara College Culinary School to find out what's in these dyes. Many of the artificial colors are actually petroleum byproducts. Professor and food scientist Amy Pru shows us two of them. Can you show me the Allura Red? What does yeah. it look like? So oftentimes people are mystified by what different food additives look like. It is not a big mystery. It looks like a small, dark red powder. Same goes for Sunset Yellow. As you can guess, it gives a very bold yellow color. Amy says these synthetic dyes are also more stable during manufacturing. Boiling the sugar for candy is done at extremely high temperatures. And as such, we need to have heat stable colors that are not going to scorch out and burn in that process. Okay, it's here. Our delicious delivery from Europe has arrived. Lots of good stuff. Sure enough, there's a warning label about those synthetic dyes on some of the products. Kool-Aid, okay. So this one does have the Allura Red, but also a warning label. The warning label is in multiple languages, saying Allura Red may affect activity and attention in children. The Nerds Gummy Clusters have the dyes and the warning too. But for the rest of the snacks, no warning because Allura Red, Tartrazine, and Sunset Yellow are nowhere to be found. None of the synthetic additives in the Skittles. You're gonna wanna bring your hand right up. Your pointer finger and your thumb are gonna hold the base. We're taking our treats to a cooking class in Toronto. Let's cut that in half first, and it's a lot easier to cut. Testing what these kids I brought a bunch of snacks. And their parents think about the warnings we see. In the EU, they require warning labels, not in Canada. What do you think about that? I think the warning labels should be there. And then it's the choice of, of the shopper to pick it up or not. The more information we have, the better decisions we can make. So why not provide yeah. that information? And what do they think about the other snacks from Europe?
that don't have the dyes in them at all. To me, it's obvious that decision can be made to exclude them, totally. which shows that it's not necessary. It's shocking because obviously these companies, parent companies, are global. Why are they producing, on purpose, two different sets of products? OK, so we're going to do a little experiment here with you. We're going to look at these now. And I want you guys to tell me what you notice about the differences. There we go. There's some Doritos. You got it. Ooh, look at them flying all over the place. Oh my god, the color. Like, oh, yeah. look at the color difference. Canadian one. Canadian, European. Canadian, European. What do you guys see? This one looks like really bland, but this one looks like full of flavor. I want to taste it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Take one of each and tell me what you notice about them. They're better. Which are better, the European the ones? European. Isn't that interesting? They the just Europe taste better. These are better. Oh. So the European ones taste better, two for two. What do you think? European. Really? Oh, wow. They're more tastier. Like, even though it doesn't look like it has more, like, cheese on it, it still it has more flavor, though. Here's how all of the treats we bought look. The ones from Canada on the left, the ones we ordered from Europe on the right. Health Canada says it's reviewed the research on the safety of these dyes and can't conclude they cause behavioral problems in kids. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration and a World Health Organization committee agree. Health Canada also says that if new scientific information becomes available that shows an additive is not safe, they will no longer permit it. Meantime, at McMaster University in Hamilton. Hello, oh, hi, Rosa. Khan. Professor Waliul Khan and his research team and I'm a member of my team. are studying the effect Allura Red could have on human cells. Essentially, we'll just be treating these cells with the dye. And the effect of the dye on mice, too. We're here at lunchtime. All right, Rosa, it's time to feed the mice. Feeding time, OK. All right, so what I have here is the Allura Red drinking water. Um, and then in this cage here, you can see um, the Allura Red coated food. In Professor Khan's recent study on mice, he found eating or drinking Allura Red once a week didn't have an impact. But ingesting the dye continuously for several weeks could harm gut health. It is not beneficial for the health. You're saying, why take the chance? Yes, I mean, it's, it is not bad to avoid this food. I mean, it's not helping us. Waliul says his findings point to the need for more research on humans, too. We have to do some more studies. Not just mice. But it's not just warnings. They've banned one ingredient in Europe that's still being fed to us. I think that Canadian consumers certainly should be protected. This is your marketplace. We're taking a closer look at what's in our food, revealing that warning labels are required in Europe for certain synthetic food dyes, but not here. Pass me the delivery. We want to know, can we make some colorful candies that don't have these dyes? At Niagara College, Professor Amy Prue and her students are going to create some tasty treats for us with no synthetic dyes. Amy, this is my favorite time of day, snack time. What's on the menu? They're going to make some gummies, some lollipops, and some marshmallows. But will the treats look good? So this is a natural coloring agent. Uh, which we added in this one. This is made of uh, turmeric and sunflower seeds. While Amy's students whip up their candy creations, dietitian Allison Ooh, Martinez dives into another food additive, one recently banned from food in the EU, titanium dioxide. That's another component that's added to foods, especially to make them whiter or brighter. Titanium dioxide is allowed in food here in Canada. Sure enough, we find it in many products. But it's not in the European versions of the same treats. Why is this on your radar as a dietitian? So it's in my radar just because of some of the issues that have been raised in Europe that have to do with potential health risks of its ingestion. 
To find out why it was banned in the EU, we're heading to Parma, Italy. Well, virtually anyway. To the European Food Safety Authority, where we meet with Camilla Smiraldi. Hi, Camilla. Buon pomeriggio. Rosa from Marketplace, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Rosa. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Camilla leads EFSA's food additive and flavorings team. They recently re-evaluated titanium dioxide. We could not really exclude the possibility that titanium dioxide can um, damage the DNA material, the genetic material in the cells. Sounds serious. The fact that it has this potential to damage the DNA material is not something that we should intentionally add to, to food. So these are some foods that we purchased in Canada. Uh, the same foods are available in the EU. All these Canadian versions have titanium dioxide. The European versions, of course, do not. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I think that there can be alternatives. As, uh, as you have seen, we have the same products on the market. Scientist Thomas Galligan wants health authorities here to follow the EU's lead. We petitioned the FDA to ban titanium dioxide on the, the same, based on the same evidence that it was banned in the EU. Do you think Health Canada should ban it as well then? Yeah, I, I think that Canadian consumers certainly should be protected from titanium dioxide to the same degree that European consumers currently are. Back at the cooking class, we ask parents what they think. What do you think when you hear it's been banned in the EU but it's allowed in our foods? We're no different than people in Europe, so uh, why is it that we have different content of the products? I think it's, it's a great question for Health Canada. When it comes to the food additive titanium dioxide, Health Canada tells us there is no conclusive scientific evidence that it's a concern for human health. A World Health Organization committee agrees. In the U.S., the FDA is currently reviewing the use of titanium dioxide in food. So where does all of that leave consumers? Everybody has access to the same studies. How did EFSA and Health Canada come to two very different conclusions? Pretty much depends with which pair of eyes you're looking into that. Which paper do you consider are relevant or not? When we're talking about something that uh, has no nutritional value that we intentionally add to food. And, uh, and that's our assessment. Camilla notes that as more research is done, their scientific opinion could change. We asked the companies why include these food additives in their Canadian products. The makers of these products do not respond. The others tell us their products are safe and comply with all laws and Health Canada regulations. Some add that Health Canada and the European Food Safety Authority have not conclusively found concerns for human health with titanium dioxide. Food companies do not need to wait for regulations. I'd like them to make the choice to reformulate their products, to get rid of titanium dioxide and synthetic food dyes, and use better alternatives for the good of public health. Back at Niagara College, our synthetic dye-free sweets are ready. Now it's time for the big test. I want you guys to taste test these for us. What do you think, Nora? It tastes like fruity. Still yeah, yummy. it's actually really good. It's still good. Mm -hmm. I like the lollipop the most. Yeah. Would you be disappointed, though, if you opened the package and it wasn't like these really bright colors? No. These kids say no synthetic dyes are needed, since it all comes down to just one thing. Taste. 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 We're going to have to save room for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>